Hi and welcome back to the Oracle Mobile Application Framework YouTube channel. As you've been watching this series, we've aimed to give you the basics of creating a feature for a mobile application. Now, having mastered the basic, let's return to features and look at something called feature constraints. This functionality in Oracle Math lets you restrict access to a feature based on information that you evaluate at runtime. So why might you want to control access to features or specific parts of your application? Well, it might be for security reasons, or it might be that the device is unable to support that particular feature. There are three broad factors in Oracle Math by which you can restrict access to a feature. Firstly, you can restrict access based on who is using the application. It could be that your application requires you to have certain privileges or to be in a certain role in order to access a feature. So you can only access the HR update feature if you're an HR manager. You might want to restrict access based on information about the device. So for example, you're running on iOS, you may be able to offer some different functionality from the same application if it's running on uh, an Android tablet. And the third category for controlling access to features is based on the hardware. If the device is a camera, you may offer a feature which involves capturing information by taking a photograph. But if you don't have a camera, you obviously want to hide that feature. And another use case is based on screen size. So depending on the screen space you have, you may offer different features or maybe even render different layouts depending on the amount of screen space that you have. So knowing information about your, your user, your device and your hardware can give you the insight to tailor your application accordingly. So how does Oracle Math make this information available to you as a developer? So to handle this, the math framework keeps track of all the different device characteristics such as user, the device and the hardware. It then makes this information accessible to the developer through a dotted notation expression that we can use to define the constraints of our features. So to access information about the current user's privileges, you would reference user.privileges. To see what roles the current user has, you would reference user.roles. And in a similar vein, you can do the same for device properties. So device.name will give you the name of the device in which the app is running. And device.os will tell you that you're running, for example, on iOS. And device.version will give you the version number of the operating system. And finally, you can interrogate hardware properties as well. So if you want to check, the, for example, the hardware has a camera, you reference hardware dot has camera. And if you want to know if the application can access geolocation information, then you use hardware dot has geolocation. To know the status of your network connection, for example, before trying to write information back to remote service, you would check hardware dot network status. And if you want to access properties about the physical dimensions of the screen, you can use the hardware screen width. These are only a small example of some of the properties you can access, but where can you actually use them? Well, there are a number of places, places you can, so let's take a quick look at this within JDeveloper. Firstly, you can control access at the feature level, so whether a feature will be made available in your application. In this example, I might decide that my document capturing feature is only available if the device is a camera, since that's how the feature captures documents. From here, I select the feature, and in the Constraints tab, I click the green plus sign to create a new constraint. In the resulting dialog, I can select the property. In this case, it's hardware.hasCamera. I also define an operator and a value. So in this case, the document feature will only be available if the hardware has a camera. Note that you can define a number of constraints and they will be anded together. 
So you've seen how you can use constraints to control access to features. But there are also other places where you can use constraints. You can also define a constraint at the content level. The way this works is that for a particular feature you could define one, two or however many different AMX pages or task flows that you want to represent that feature. You can then use constraints to define which of the AMX page or task flows should then be used. Now when might this be useful? Well consider a tablet versus a smartphone. A tablet has a lot more screen estate for laying out content. So you might decide that you want to display a different page with lots more content if the application is running on a tablet. And when running on a smartphone, you would only show a subset of that information on the page. So here I am back in the mathfeature.xml file, but now I'm in the content tab. And you can see that for the dashboard feature, I've defined two possible pages dashboard pad and dashboard phone. If I select dashboard pad, I can create the constraint when this page should be used by clicking the green plus sign to create a new constraint. And just like before, I create my constraint. In this case, the diagonal size of the screen is more than six. And I'm not restricted to static values. I can use expression language to reference a value, for example, that comes from a Java bean. And this ability to use expression language is valid for feature level constraints also. So for this dashboard feature, I will use an AMX page designed specifically for the tablet if the diagonal size of the screen is greater than 6. Otherwise, I will default to using the dashboard.phone page. So as you've seen, we can define constraints at both the feature and the content level. But there is a third way of accessing constraint information, and that's through something we have briefly touched on called expression language, or EL, it's sometimes known as. Now you'll learn more about expression language later in this course, but any of the properties you've seen so far, like has camera or network status, could be accessed from UI components using expression language. So in this example, you might decide that a button which is used to take a photo should only be visible if the device can support taking a picture. In which case, you can set the button's rendered property to device-scope.hardware.has-camera. So the component is only rendered for devices with a camera. So in this episode, you've seen how you can control access to various facets of your application depending on the user, the hardware or the device. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode and thanks for watching and look out for more episodes.